Hey family and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today's video is going to be a bit more personal about me today and what I learned from my first marriage and what I'm going to carry into my second marriage. So stay tuned. All right, family, thank you so much for coming on back. So again, this video will be a little bit more personalized than I usually do. Um, but so let me just give you a little bit of background. Okay, let's start there. So all of this confidence that you guys see in front of you was not always there. Um, I had low self-esteem as a child and... A lot of it came from me and this chocolate skin. That was the 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 thing that I got teased about when I was a child. It was my chocolate skin. Uh, and, uh, of course, it took a toll on my self-esteem. And the funny part about that is, you know, all of the jokes that you hear, you got burnt in the oven, why you so black, blah, blah, blah. I heard all of that stuff, but I never heard you were ugly in combination with the dark skin. It was always that insult that some people think is a compliment, which is, you are so pretty to be dark. Like, I'm pretty to be dark. Do you tell light-skinned light skin people that they're pretty to be light-skinned? Or do you tell Caucasian people that they're pretty to be Caucasian? No, you just say that they're pretty or they're beautiful. So why do I have to get that ending portion on there? You're pretty to be... It's like, nah, that, that's actually insult. So, if you are one of those people that say that to dark-skinned women, uh, lose that portion. Lose that portion of your vocabulary because it's actually an insult. It is not a compliment. If I'm pretty, I'm pretty. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Um, so, that was my thing. And, of course, I would walk around with my head down low. I would really, really, really hate to... Um, be in high school and throughout junior high. So um, a few of my siblings, they are actually of the lighter skin complexion. And I specifically remember walking home with my brother one day who is of lighter complexion. And um, some kids just being kids, but being mean. And they were like, do you guys have the same parents? And I'm like, yeah, because I didn't think, I didn't know where they were going with this. But I'm like, yeah, we have the same parents. And they like, well, why are you so black and he's so yellow or light skinned? And I was, okay, so that laughter that you hear in the background is my actual husband. So he's hearing some of these stories just like you for the first time. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, I just, that, that was such an insult. And that, like, what do I say to that? Um, I'm a child. I didn't understand that my pigment was my pigment. There's nothing I could do about it. But I do remember vividly being teased and there was a crowd of people walking around, um, like, I'm sorry, walking behind us. And I think it was a girl. I honestly can't remember, but I just remember the statement. Why are you so black? And he's so light skinned. And I'm like, I mean, I didn't choose my skin, but I didn't even verbalize it. So that was another thing because I was always teased about this chocolate skin. I would pretty much go into my shell and that translated and went on until I was out of high school. I also remember being in high school, being teased about my chocolate skin. So it, um, it followed me. Let me just back up and say that this chocolate skin followed me. And some of you guys will be able to understand when I say, I got teased at school, and you know you at school several hours, right? And then I also got teased when I got home because my family knew that that was the thing that could break me down to make me go and cry or leave them alone. Now, now I'm not saying that I'm innocent because I would tease my siblings on what I knew that was wrong with them that would get under their skin as well. But for me particularly because I got teased about this at school and then I went home and got teased about this, I never could escape my chocolate skin or me feeling less than having self-esteem issues. So when it came time to the dating portion of me in my life, it was pretty much non-existent because dark skinned sisters, we just now come in, in style if you really want to be truthful about the situation as far as America goes. Did I have guys and men, you know, trying to hit on me my entire life? Yeah, but um, 
it was always like if I was out with my high school girlfriends, we were walking throughout the streets or whatever, and the younger guy who had the cars would drive past us. I remember this actual another story where um, they were all choosing the friends, and then the last guy. He was like, but she's so black. So it was just like, okay, I never could escape it, right? And um, again, of course, it took a toll on my self-esteem. So I never really had a real boyfriend while in high school or junior high because my parents was just, they was just not going for any of that. And um, so dating was not on the menu. Um, so I never really had any interaction with the except with, with guys or whatever, with the exception of my dad and my brothers, but obviously not in that way. So, uh, when it was time for me to leave home at eight, at the age of 18, that's where I was with dating, which was non-existent. That's where I was with my self-esteem, which was super, super low. And it was never nothing else. It wasn't like my hair wasn't done or, you know, I, I lived X, Y, and Z place. It was nothing about that. It was always about my chocolate skin or blackness or whatever you want to say. So dark skin sisters are just now coming into play, at least worldwide. And uh, more and more people are wanting to have a darker skin sister on their side or whatever and marry and all that other stuff. But that's a different story. I brought that up because when I got into my relationship, I had no idea how to really date, what to really expect. And even though I grew up around my aunts and my mom and everybody was in a relationship and I didn't realize that everybody wasn't married until I got older but everybody was in, in, in a relationship and we were a close-knit family so we were always around each other like always around each other so everybody had multiple children <laughs> so I was always around my cousins and everything and then we would always have like excuse me, like picnics or go here, go there. We was always with the family. So around me, what I, what stood out for me was everybody was in a relationship. And nobody taught me about the things that I need to look for, how I needed to act, uh, um, like the real treatment that a guy is supposed to give you. So just like many of you, all of that was learned from the School of Hard Knocks, which is real life situations. So when I met my first husband, we met in the Navy and, um, you know, met his boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever. He, he actually did treat me pretty well. And he was the first person to help me work on my low self-esteem, specifically with my dark skin. Um, there were a few other things that I won't mention on here <laughs> that I had uh, low self-esteem about. But uh, he he definitely um, helped me in other areas. But all of this confidence and, you know, kind of in your face that you see here now was a work in progress. So don't think that you are going to jump from where you're at up to this extravagant person with, um, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not this extravagant person with this extravagant self-esteem where everybody's going to see you, especially if that has not been your personality. Now, I'm on the opposite end, which now it has been my personality for many, many years. And um, this is what everybody sees. Even like when I was in the dating stages, I had a few girlfriends who would actually say, literally let this roll off their tongue, that they didn't want to hang out with me. or And they would say it in a joking manner, right? But but it was still real. It was still their thoughts. But what they were saying is that they didn't really want to go out with me as far as like going out being the single girls because all of the guys would always only want to talk to me. And... um I, I just thought that that was very funny, very comical, especially given my childhood. But so anyway, I'm going to move on. One of the first things that I learned from my first marriage that I'm absolutely going to bring into my second marriage is just that I have to be confident in myself, period. And so when I first was there, I wasn't confident in myself. I wasn't confident enough to speak up for the things that I wanted, the things that I needed, the things that I didn't like or liked or whatever. And so speaking up is something that I learned in my first marriage that I absolutely am bringing into my second marriage. And um, it has been, for me at least, <laughs> it has been a portion that is keeping me sane, that is like letting me speak my own thoughts and have my own voice 
and it's been working for me. So that's one of the first things. I'm able to speak up and have my own voice and just make sure that my hubby <laughs> understand exactly what I want. And if I need to say no, then it's no. You know, we could talk about it, but, you know, it's no. So to speak up. The second thing that I learned is all of my chocolate skin, there's nothing I can do about it. I did try the bleaching creams when I was younger, but not. Um, it wasn't like uh, where I was specifically going out and buying like the pure bleaching creams to get my skin whiter. It was like products that would help with like, you know, like some type of acne or whatever it was, like the dark spots. But I noticed that it was like lightening my entire face. And so I would use those products. But after, I didn't like the smell though. I didn't like the smell. So I think I used the the, the, the product that I'm thinking about, like two, two different tubes. And um, I did notice that it, you know, it evened out my skin. It took away the dark spots. But um, that, that bleaching, just, it wasn't for me. So with that, I had to learn how to accept me and all of me and all of my chocolate. <laughs> And I have done that. Like, you can't tell me nothing, y'all. Y'all y'all can't tell me nothing. Like, when I was younger, you probably could tell me, you know, all of the blackness and all of those mean jokes. And don't even get me wrong. I'm laughing now. But sometimes that insecurity still pops up. And I know that it's, you know, it's basically long gone. But if I'm telling a story to someone, especially if they're able to ask me questions, you can see me breaking down a little bit more and you know, talking about specific things, it still does occur. But overall, don't get it twisted. <laughs> this little chocolate lady loves all of her. Like all of her. Like all of her. And ain't nothing you can tell me right now. It really ain't. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I literally just had to grow into loving me. Like forget what everybody else said about me and my, and my skin. I'm even more in the in the um, stages of like that little comment that you'll make. Oh, you cute to be dark. I'd be like, what you mean? I'm cute to be dark. I'm either cute or I'm ugly. So before I wouldn't voice any of that. It was just like, oh, you know, thank you. You know, little, little soft voice. And now it's like, what you mean? I'm cute to be dark. Well, like, explain that to me. Do you tell my light skin they cute to be light skin? Like I said earlier, like, do you go down the road? Of that when you're talking to somebody else who doesn't have my complexion if you don't then you need to check yourself that's the way I feel about it and now you will get my mouth because I need for you to understand that is not a compliment it is actually an insult okay all right the third thing that I bring into this relationship into this marriage is when I sense something is wrong when my women's intuition is telling me to follow my gut Guess what? I have to ask some questions and maybe I didn't do that before. And um, not maybe. I know that I didn't do that before because I wouldn't have went to a, through a divorce the first time. And not necessarily that I would still be in a relationship with my first husband. It's more of maybe I wouldn't even married him because I would have understood exactly who I am. And then because he hid some things about himself, maybe I wouldn't have even married him because I seen that those were things that I didn't want to deal with my entire life, my entire relationship. Obviously, we will never know, but when I see things now, I just address them. Obviously, not in a disrespectful manner, or at least I try not to be, you know, I try to make a con conscious effort not to be uh, disrespectful because I know that that's really high on the list of men um, loving their woman and just feeling appreciated and everything so I want to make sure that I come to him even if even if it's not something that he's going to necessarily want to talk about again I want my voice to be heard and my concerns because it could be something that I'm completely wrong about but if I never address it now, I'm going through all of these scenarios in my head about what's going on and why he's doing this. And, and, and none of it could be true. Some of it could be, but none of it could be true. And I'm around here all ticked off, but I'm not voicing what I need to say. I didn't follow my intuition. I didn't listen to my gut to at least speak up. Doesn't mean that I'm right. 
I just want to know what's going on. What I did realize, this is the next thing. I did realize that um, before I got into my first marriage, I was not the approacher of men at all, whether for me or for one of my friends, you know, just very scared. You know, we, we think about rejection, too, as women. And so I didn't want to get rejected or told no or, you know, hear the stupid saying about anything about my skin color or anything like that. So I was more in the background. After I got married, it was just that feeling of, what do I have to lose? Like, if he say no, whether it was for me or my friend, it didn't even matter. If he say no or, you know, get away from here or whatever it is, whatever wording that he's going to use, that's that's his thing. He can say it. That don't mean I have to internalize it and woe was me or he didn't want to talk to me because of my skin or whatever it is. So my confidence has definitely been exponentially <laughs> boosted. Okay, it really has. And I, that's something that I'm very proud of, too, because, uh, it's again, it took me a long time to get here where I am the confident the confident person that you see before you because years ago especially in high school and stuff this was not the confident person I mean I just I just wasn't and that's just what it is I wasn't <laughs> and I didn't know how to handle these things and how to voice things and I'm not like a super argumentative person anyway I really don't like conflict so to address and confront people was just never my thing and it still isn't like we can have a conversation when you calm down or later on, if you ask me what happened, then I'll just tell you. But as far as like coming to you, like, and we need to, and you need to, and you didn't, uh, that that's not me personally. That's just, just not. So, um, I just had to learn to love me and to be confident and to understand it just doesn't matter. If the guy out there doesn't want to talk to me, it doesn't matter if he, you know, turns me down. I'm not going to die. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to like slice my wrist because he didn't find me attractive enough to want to take me out of whatever it was. So even even with my husband, um, I actually approached him. Now, we did online dating. I told you guys that before, but I actually reached out to him and said something to him first. And obviously we went back and forth and we're married now, but I approached him first. So, I'm okay. I was just like, well, you either going to say yes or no. Let's see. <laughs> All right. The next thing is that um, I learned to make a deal breakers list. Now, when during my first marriage, I thought that I made a deal breakers list, but it wasn't specific enough. And, um, again, I didn't stick to those things when I found out that, he was doing some of the things on my deal breakers list. I didn't stick to him, meaning I didn't break off the relationship. I went ahead and married him, and um, he had become a completely different person than the, than the guy that I was dating, than the guy that I married. And um, I didn't want that to happen this time around. So I will say that my deal breakers list was... It was lengthy in the sense that it wasn't like just 10 things on there that I preach. It was lengthy enough for me to... It was still realistic, though. And it was not um, like money, your cars. You know, he has to have this amount of money in his bank account. He has to drive this car. He has to have this profession. You know, it wasn't anything like that. I really I really dealt with the treatment, um, the, the, the him wanting to be married, him wanting to have a child or a children... Um, him wanting to, you know, do, do specific things that I specifically wanted. So these things were all attainable. They were all, I was able to see if he was able to meet all of these things. And in my first marriage, I didn't, I wasn't as detailed. And so even though I found out later on, this was still before we were married, I found out later on that he met some of my things like super deal breakers i still married him so i did not stick to it so even though i made one sort of um i didn't stick to it so in this marriage i definitely i stuck to it and i think i told you guys before that my now husband met i think it was like 90 something percent of what was on my deal breakers list do we still, like I said, do we still have our issues and our spats and all that stuff? Of course we do. We are human. We're both going to fall short. There are absolutely always going to be misunderstandings. 
but are we able to get things back on track at a much faster pace? I think so. You know, of course, we still fall short even in that area. Sometimes we're both being stubborn, don't want to say anything, even though we know we need to. Let's go ahead and reconcile this. But sometimes we just don't. And uh, <laughs> not, not as early as I would like to and maybe as early as he would like to as well. So those are several things that I learned from my first marriage that I'm bringing into my second marriage. But all of this, you guys, literally, I'm teaching all of this in my online courses. And that's actually why I wanted to do this video today because each step for my online courses is exactly what I went through. I literally went through all of those things. I took the time out for the super singles online course that I have. I took the time out to do each and every one of those things before I started to try to date because um, let me just back up and say that for a while I was like going through the ups and downs of dating, ups and downs of dating, right? And I was just like, you know what, I'm actually tired of this. Like super tired of this. I'm going to figure out why it's not working. And a lot of times, people, yes, come on in here. A lot of times, your relationship is not working out because of you. Yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow because we all like to point the finger. None of us really like to take responsibility as far as why my relationship is not working out. What am I doing wrong? And um, a lot of times we are doing things wrong that are setting ourselves up for the relationship not to work out. So with that being said, my super single course, because you need to know exactly what you want, need and desire before you get into a relationship, you have to know you in and out. That course is going to specifically help you to understand what you need to know about yourself before you get into a relationship. And most of us don't take the time to understand ourselves. And then when we jump into relationships or into the dating phase, we have no idea why it's not working out. So that one is going to help you concentrate on specifically yourself. The beauty in that particular course is that you can still work on yourself while you are in the dating stages or in a long term or a marriage relationship. Because most of us never took the time out to do that. Yes, you got into the dating, but your, your dating could be a lot better. Or your actual relationship as far as your long-term or marriage relationship could be a lot better. So even in the dating stages, which is my second course, my second online course, and the second stage of a relationship, you are dating. Because the first stage is really you're dating yourself. You're, you're understanding yourself, right? So that's my super single online course. My second one is where you're actually dating um, the guy of the opposite, well, the guy of the opposite sex, <laughs> where you're actually dating the guy and um, using some of the things that I went through as well during the dating stages. And these, these, this actually gave me clarification and uh, I understood how to navigate through the dating stages and just to get it right because it took me many years to get it right. <laughs> and so you don't have to take many years to get it right since the course is already written out for you. And you can just go ahead and take the course to get it right. Are you going to get it right all in one day? Absolutely not. When I was taking my own online courses, literally it took me um, multiple times to go through that particular course before I was able to soak up everything so I can use it on a consistent basis but also when I'm not thinking about doing it it wasn't it wasn't um, it was a subconscious thing because it was ingrained in me because I listened and I soaked up all of that information and my dating relationships became much better like my husband he he really he really did get the absolute best and I'm sure again there's there's always room for improvement but at the time he got the absolute best person that I was because I went through my own courses and so now I'm offering all of this stuff for you so you can go through the courses yourself so you can see how your dating relationship can get so much better and you will have more men to choose from if you actually do the dating and do it right and then you'll also be able to pluck and throw away all of the guys that you don't want to deal with because you're seeing some of the things that you don't that you just don't like that you don't want to deal with 
and then even in my long term slash marriage course all of the things that I'm learning and just understanding that you need to bring into your relationship to, to bring the spark back you know what I mean like y'all not laughing as much anymore y'all not playing as much anymore everything is business as usual and you need to break some of those things back you need to break them up or maybe you never even understood how to really be in a marriage. Like you did get in a marriage. You're there now or in a long-term relationship. But you're still trying to figure out how to make things better. This course is going to help you understand how to make that relationship better. All of the links to each and every one of those courses is three of them. As I mentioned before, all of those links are to the respective course. Definitely go ahead check out the course purchase it that's absolutely going to help me out but it's but really it's going to help you out because you're going to see the difference you're going to see the difference night and day i mean within the first people say overnight but really it happens in like the first few weeks because the first time you do something especially if you've been doing it the wrong way your partners they're gonna be looking they might even notice but they're they might not think that this is something that you are going to continue to do so it's over time again within the next uh, within the next week or so I'm saying few weeks you definitely should see a drastic change in your relationship and usually is a is usually it's usually when you have to incorporate small changes it's not drastic changes that you need to make to your relationship so go ahead and purchase those programs thank you so much for listening today I absolutely appreciate it if you have any questions definitely go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section below or if you have a story yourself and a question that you want me to answer send that to me in my email which is the I love me 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 one two three at gmail.com that is also in the description box below i will see you guys in a future video two finger salute